Guys, welcome to another fun episode of TFL Talking Trucks. I am Andre Smirnov and with me, Nathan Adlin, guys. Thanks, guys, for joining us today on this episode. We're going to actually try to uh, get to the bottom of this question. Which half-ton full-size truck engine is the best and which one is the worst, maybe? I think we can encapsulate that by saying which one is the best for me because yes. Andre, you got to admit, a lot of people either underestimate or way overestimate the engines that they're getting in various trucks. Some people are only towing, you know, a couple thousand pounds and they're out there with a vehicle that can tow 10, 12, 14,000 pounds, which is completely unnecessary and they paid a lot of, you know, a lot more money. So, I think we're going to try to boil that down into what engines you can get with which truck? Yes. And what they can do. Yes, and because, and this is very complicated, we get a lot of questions from you guys because there's up to like 18 different options in, half, in the full-size half-ton segment. So let's take those 18 engines and actually uh, whittle it down to the core of it. Thank you for joining TFL Talking Trucks podcast. If you love pickup trucks or big full-size SUVs, if you love trailering, towing and going off-road, this is the right place to be. Together, we can make this podcast the most popular ever. First of all, a couple things, guys. We're not covering mid-sized trucks. We're not covering heavy-duty trucks. We're just covering half tons, which is one of the most popular segments out there. And there are a lot of automakers to choose from. So we're talking about Nissan, Toyota, Ford, Ram, and General Motors. So we're going to combine Chevrolet with GMC. Yeah, for sure. And let's start with Toyota because let's start with the trucks that uh, offers kind of the least amount of engine options. Correct. Uh, and work to the most. So the, yeah, that's right. So with Toyota, well, first of all, guys, the Tundra is, as many of you know, old, like older than Tommy old. It is ancient. Wow. And the platform is very old, the engine and transmission, and there's only one offering are quite old as well. We're not saying it's bad. It's actually an excellent truck, but it is ancient. Andre, tell us the details. Yeah, this is the Tundra SR5. And the reason why I'm saying SR5, it's basically um, an SR, in fact. Mm -hmm. Those are their base trucks for the Tundra, right? right? The Tundra for 2021, it's the same one, like you were saying, as it's been for the last, well, let's see, 12, 13 years. Although there's a big caveat, they did refresh it several times, at least twice. They've added all the tech to it. So and this, headlights and taillights, some yeah, LED. And adaptive cruise control. Whoop. So anyway, the Tundra is really cool, but let's focus on the engines. Yeah. Right? right now, it used to have more options, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to have a six cylinder and there was a smaller display, so an uh, eight cylinder and 4.7. Yeah, and now we're talking about 5.7 liter V8. Right. They call it the iForce. This is a really good engine. I mean, it's been also in the Land Cruiser for forever. Um, even um, some other trucks. Sequoia you know, too, right? Sequoia and Tundra, of course, has had it for many, many years. Toyota Super has it too. Kidding. Uh, kidding. <laughs> Lexus LX is oh. powered by that engine. Really? Um, yeah. Huh. So, so this is a really cool, very powerful engine. And in, in the Tundra, it produces 381 horsepower mm -hmm. and 401 pound-feet of torque. It's made it to a six-speed automatic. This is the only powertrain option you can get in the Tundra. Right. Yes, and so let's talk about pricing a little bit because price is very important, obviously, when you're shopping. And also capability, right? Yeah, totally. So um, you can get a base uh, Tundra um, with, it comes with a V8, for about 35365 bucks to start. This is kind of an SR or an SR5 grade Tundra. Um, and if you guys are watching this on TFL Talk YouTube channel, uh, we, of course, distribute the podcast anywhere the, where podcasts, you know, can be downloaded. Right. But also on YouTube, you know, we, we have, um, you probably can see this image on, behind him on the screen behind me. Uh, so, and capability wise, right? Mm -hmm. So capability, this Tundra is rated to tow about up to 10,000 pounds. Which I think is sort of an overriding theme throughout a lot of these trucks is that 10,000 is sort of the, the sweet spot. Um, a maximum for some, and not in, in some cases, uh, they don't even quite make that. But the thing about the Tundra, and one thing I want to put out there, yes, that is a fairly hefty base price, but consider what you're getting. A lot of the other trucks that are going to be on this list have a base model uh, V6 of some sort, or six-cylinder engine, or even a four-cylinder engine in one case. This is a beefy V8, and it's standard, and as such, 
you're getting that for 35 grand as opposed to some of the less expensive trucks where you get the uh, less powerful V6s. Yeah, and of course it's available with two-wheel drive or, or four-wheel four, drive. Four drive. So yeah, you, you are getting a very powerful V8 engine for that price. And the way I look at the Tundra and then coming up the Titan, mm -hmm. the Nissan Titan, is if you want to tell, like you were saying, just under 10,000 pounds. Let's say you have a camping trailer, it weighs boat. about seven, seven to 8,000 pounds, right. or a boat, or maybe you're taking you know, horses. Your ATVs or horses somewhere, mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of the sweet spot for the Tundra. Some of the other trucks are rated way higher. Yeah. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Indeed we will. So, so for those types of tasks, this engine is really good, but there is one Achilles heel, which is the fuel efficiency. It is one of the least efficient trucks on this list. Yeah, and it partly has to do with the rear differential ratio. It's a 430. Mm -hmm. It's a really burly, big, low-geared rear end. Yeah, really, actually pretty good for off-roading. Yeah, it's really good for crawling, mm -hmm. slow speed moving, but it's not great for efficiency. And you can see that because it's basically currently the lowest rated uh, yeah, vehicle in its class. Indeed it is. Now, on top of that, I want to add one more minor issue, which is, unfortunately, even with the TRD Pro, you can't get a electronic locking rear diff like you can on almost every other truck on this list, which is a real shame. But otherwise, in terms of just a stout, hardcore, really reliable truck, and we say it a lot, and it's not just because of you know what we hear, it's because what we've witnessed, it is a beefy, strong truck. And also a good value. Even the TRD Pros, they're around, what, 54,000 bucks with yeah, That's with a couple of options, yeah. Yeah, so that's still good value considering what it's <laughs> up Considering against. that you can be easily well in 70, 80,000 dollars for some of these other trucks with a similar type of off-road package. Yeah, so let's switch gears to the next one, the Titan. Switching gears to the Titan. Now, the Nissan Titan has recently been heavily revised. And amongst the things that it has, there are two different models. But I consider, personally speaking, if you consider both of them half tons, then it makes things a lot easier. So they have the XD model, and they have the regular half ton model of the Titan. Now, the XD model is very similar to the regular one, except it has a much beefier frame. And we're gonna to get to that in a moment, but that's why it's slightly above the Toyota, because technically it gives you more choices in terms of truck platform. Yeah, absolutely. And the engine we're talking about, once again, one engine option. Mm -hmm. And Nissan will tell you this is the most powerful base V8, and they're right. Uh, with premium fuel, 400 horsepower, yep. 413 pound-feet of torque. If you don't want to use premium fuel, you could still run the engine happily um, and get 390 horsepower. That is correct. And here's the thing about that engine, and um, it's something that I've said a million times. Andre's heard me say it a million times. It is one of my favorite V8s that is currently being produced by any truck maker in the business. It's extremely flexible. It's relatively efficient. It has an amazing exhaust note, stock, not, you know, you don't have to add a TRD exhaust or you know, anything like that. It is just an altogether very good, powerful engine. Yes, th that's absolutely true. And it's now made it to a nine-speed automatic in the truck. Mm -hmm. um, and you and I have towed long, long distance with previous Titans. Yes. And, and these Titans as well, the latest one. And the nine speed is an improvement. For in, sure. in, in many ways. We had a long term, uh, if you rega guys recall, we did it uh, called the Titan Trials. We had a yellow TRD uh, Pro 4X. Yes. Yes. And it's, it was a great truck. But one of the things that Andre and I both agreed on is that the transmission, it's the seven speed, it wasn't great. This new nine speed fixes some of those problems. Yeah, and basically it was an issue where. Uh, when towing upgrades, we're in Colorado, we're mm. based in Colorado, so we have to tow in the mountains oh, quite yeah. a lot. And the older 7-speed just had kind of a, these gaps where the RPM ranges differed quite greatly mm -hmm. between gears. The 9-speed kind of fills those gaps in a little bit more. So I, I don't know if it's perfect. I wouldn't call it like the perfect setup, but it improves it greatly. It, it does help. Yeah, and once again, the fuel efficiency is not the best. It's near the bottom, kind of where the Tundra is. It's, it's a little bit better than the Tundra. Yeah, it's a little bit better than the Tundra, especially with the nine speed. They mm. gained a little bit of efficiency there. Um, and also same capability, approximately the same capability with the base Titan. And the Titan XD, uh, this, like, the, like you mentioned, uh, it's a separate platform. Right. Uh, it's actually a heavier frame, longer wheelbase. You get a six and a half foot bed. Nissan Titan calls it kind of like the ultimate uh, towing package. 
you know how every manufacturer has a towing package, right? But but Nissan gives you actually a different truck, basically. By doing this, Nissan, if you consider the XD a half ton, which I think they really should, it suddenly makes that truck into one of the better towing trucks in its class. We've towed with several XDs. Now remember, they no longer have the Cummins uh, five liter diesel V8 yeah, available. Yeah, no longer offered. Yeah, right? it's, it, they got rid of it last year, yeah. which, which is a shame for some of us, but the bottom line is that that, that same 5.6 liter V8 is available, well not available, it's standard, on the Titan XD as well. The good news is it's a much better towing truck, so if you're serious about towing, but you want to get something that's much closer to a half ton truck, the XD is not a bad choice. Yeah, and the pricing is also pretty attractive. Uh, I'm showing on my screen here a King Cab Titan 2021 model. Once again, all these trucks we're talking about are 2021s. Right. And the price is about 37785 so it's a little bit more for this particular one. This is the base S model, two-wheel drive, than the, than the Tundra right. as far as asking price. Uh, but you know you're still getting that latest interior, you know, the latest infotainment system, which has systems. been greatly improved. Right, and all of course all the safety features as well uh, that are built in, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So right. once again, if you're towing under ten thousand pounds, um, uh, the Titan and the Tundra are really good choices because they offer V8 engines, very powerful, and very good for towing. That's right. Now, by the way, real quickly, just on a quick note, with both of these vehicles under the situation we're currently finding ourselves under, which is COVID, you might be able to score a pretty good deal on some of these trucks. Nissan hasn't sold a lot of the Titans, and Toyota is moving to an all-new Tundra in the near future. I, I know that Toyota dealerships are historically difficult to deal with, but you might be able to get a much better deal on a truck because they want to move that inventory out to bring in the new stuff, which should be coming pretty soon, right? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, actually, I think 21s are in dealers basically across the board. Yeah. If you're looking, this is at the end of 2020 calendar year. Yeah. Right. We're, when we're recording this. We're literally uh, at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, in December. And already all the 2021 models, as far as I know, already dealers. Even the Ford F-150, the 2021s are arriving. Finally. But <laughs> basically like today. <laughs> yeah. But we'll get over that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So let's move on from the Nissan to the next vehicle, uh, next automaker on the list, which is Ram. Yes, Ram. Now we're stepping up from basically one powertrain option to five. That is correct, Amanda. So how are you supposed to choose? What are you supposed to do? Well, keep in mind that uh, Ram has become much more competitive over, say, the past 10 years. And they are now threatening not just General Motors, but also Ford. Not just with sales, but also with the amount of engines you can choose, the powertrains and everything else. They've managed to really make a cohesive package and build trucks that are better than the ones that they replace. They're much more reliable, they're more stout, they're more powerful. Obviously, in some cases, like the TRX, way more powerful. We'll get to that in a moment. So let's start with the base engine, because that is one of their most reliable engines out there. And it's been around for a while, and they've shoved it into almost everything, including front-wheel drive cars. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's in Jeeps, it's in... In everything, yeah. Except for Fiat. It's not in any Fiats. Right, which is it's in fine. Dodge cars, it's in Wranglers, yeah. it's in everything. We're talking about the 3.6. Yeah, the Pentastar. Liter V6, the Pentastar. It's available as a base motor in the Ram 1500. And we're talking about this new generation. They still have what's called the Ram Classic. Right. The Ram Classic is a previous generation Ram that's available in a regular cab, the two-door, and also something called the Warlock which is kind of their, you know, kind of a fun package. That they know they how to use cool names. Yes. It, it helps. It's, it's actually, their PR is brilliant when it comes to really cool names. Yeah, Ram marketing is, is, is uh, on top of it. Uh, but the tradesman, the new generation tradesman for 2021 starts at about 32245 for the shorter quad cab two-wheel drive model. So 32000 this is less than the Tundra, this is less than the Titan, but once again, it's a V6. Exactly, so, so the, you're not getting that, you know, capability of the right. V8s, but you are getting a very stout engine. Yeah, you, you are, and you're getting just over 300 horsepower. Mm -hmm. The torque is not great. You know, it's, it's under 300 pound-feet of torque. Right. Um, and we've towed with this engine many, many times. If you remember, like about seven years ago, we even towed my boat, my 20-foot, uh, my 22-foot uh, ski boat with, with this engine, the V6. It was 20 feet, and then we towed so hard with it, it became 22 <laughs> feet. It stretched. Sorry, Sorry I misspoke. No, no that's uh, all right. But, <laughs> but the, uh, 
So this engine is good. Like you said, it's good for a runabout truck. Yeah. So if you're using kind of a, is a fleet truck, is a work truck. A delivery truck. If, delivery truck, you're delivering parts or, or things or parcels. Uh, it's a really good motor because it's relatively efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very simple. Like you said, it's proven itself. It has proven itself. Yeah. But when we're towing on the I Gauntlet, you know, our world's toughest towing test or towing the boat through the mountains, for example, mm -hmm. it has a tendency to start to heat up. Yeah. Um, so, and actually a lot of Ram engines do this. And I, I don't know if it's kind of like what they do. It's kind of a built-in thing. But just so you know, we're not talking about overheating. We're just saying it heated up. So, yeah. it was a, so it was no air increase. messages, no, no like pulling power, no limp No steam modes, leaping from the engine. No really. steam, but they just tend to run hot. And a lot of you guys commented about it and you guys said, you know, we don't like this. They also run at really high RPM because they scream up the hill. The V6 has, yeah. to, has to make its power. It makes its power at the higher end of the RPM, like you said. Right. So you do have to rev, rev it quite high to get the power. But let's step up to the next engine, right? Right. So if you're not towing a lot, the V6 is for you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but now if you want to tow, they have the 5.7 liter Hemi, which they've had for many, many years. And, yeah. And now there's two versions of it technically. That is correct. Now, bear in mind that we've actually had a lot of experience with the 5.7 liter Hemi, specifically on the truck that we had for about a year, right? We, we had our um, Ram Rebel with the 5.7 and it also had a very unique system, which unfortunately I don't think is that spectacular, but it's a real shame because the engine I think is pretty damn great. And that is their uh, e-torque system, right? Yeah. So. Once again, so let's talk about price, right? Mm -hmm. We already mentioned the base price for the truck around thirty-three grand. Now you can get the Hemi for one thousand seven ninety-five. Mm -hmm. So for about eighteen hundred bucks. So on top of the you step up to the V eight from the V six, uh -huh. and then if you want the e-torque system, and the e-torque system is now priced at about two hundred dollars extra. So it's not a big step up. So what does it give you? It doesn't really give you any real world fuel efficiency. We, we tested that. No, it, it, we, it doesn't really do that we, much. We found, we found that out. Uh, what it does is it does start-stop. So when you come to a complete stop, the engine would shut off. Mm -hmm. And this electric motor that's attached to the uh, belt, the serpentine belt system, so it's a mild hybrid. It's, it cannot use the electric motor to move the truck, but it can help you just move for the first inch, like they're saying. Right. You know, just kind of get going. And it has, actually smooths out the experience. A lot of people hate auto stop start system because there's shutter, you yeah, know, off and then on. Off and, and on. A, yeah. This makes it smooth. It just I will agree with it that. It does smooth things out. And on top of that, basically what the system is doing is when you get a lot of mass in a truck and you're at an absolute stop and you start accelerating, that's where you drain a lot of gas because you're, you're moving, you know, five, six, seven thousand pounds, right? Well, with this system, it kind of gets you just a little tiny touch of momentum and then everything kicks on. And if you're doing stop and go traffic a lot, that can be something that may help you in terms of MPG and possibly the durability of your engine. We don't know for sure. This is sort of theorized by the people over at Ram. The bottom line is, is that for $200 extra, are you better off with this system? Personally speaking, I don't think so. I think the 5.7 on its own hooked up to the eight speed, which is standard, um, is a fantastic combination. Yeah, and by the way, all these engines we're talking about for Ram are eight speeds, mm -hmm. uh, made it to an eight speed. That is correct. Um, and so, yeah, so the V8 is rated higher towing, about 12,000 pounds now, where the V6 Ram is around, what, seven to 8,000 pounds right. maximum. Um, this is now 12 in certain configurations. Mm -hmm. Our Rebel was rated at 11,000, and we towed that. And it towed quite well. Yeah. Once again, the Hemi on the I Gauntlet also tends to heat up on the oil side. The transmission always stays relatively cool. Mm -hmm. The coolant, the coolant uh, engine coolant itself stays relatively cool, but the oil is what heats up. Yeah, uh, but once again, we didn't have any catastrophic failure or anything crazy like that. No it was overheating. Just no yes. overheating or anything like that. It, it, it did fine. So now, uh, so that's good. But what if you want a diesel? Ah, well, we are now on our technically the third generation, right? Yes. Of uh, of their diesel is it eco diesel? It's an eco diesel Gen three, absolutely. Generation three. Now, for a lot of you out there who are diesel fans, you'll understand that this is not a big chunky diesel. This is a small displacement diesel. In fact, the remaining uh, vehicles on our list all have three liter diesels, one of which is in a very different configuration. Yeah. And these are very efficient, they have decent torque, but they're not super beefy tow 
engines. If you want that, you have to move up to a three quarter, you know, ton class, one ton class. If you want big diesels. If yeah. you want big diesels. Yes. This is a three liter, like you said. Um, the power rating is pretty stout. They mm. upgraded the power rating. Yep. Um, it's now up to 480 pound feet of torque. It's very, very torquey. Uh, they also changed the kind of the internal structure of it. They tried to make it a little bit quieter, mm. a little bit smoother. They have exhaust gas recirculation now two on the high pressure side and the low pressure side. Right. If you look at the turbocharger, it's very complex. I uh, try to understand it twice and I'm still struggling to understand all that stuff. For those of you who are wondering about the previous scandals and everything else with emissions, that's all been taken care of. They've, uh, they're now, um, you know, they have an agreement with the government. They've, they've taken care of, you know, certain, you know, financial issues with that as well. But this new powertrain is supposed to be really clean and really efficient. Yeah, and that's why they're doing this EGR, exhaust mm. gas recirculation. Exactly. Of course, uh, DEF, the diesel exhaust fluid, of course, has to be there. Right. And in, in this. So they've done all this. It's a $5,000 option, no. So it's That's quite, over the base truck. Over the base truck, right. Yes. So if you stepping up from the gas V6 to this diesel, it's about $4,995. Mm -hmm. Still comes with an eight speed. Um, I've tested a few of these, and I think you've driven a couple of these too. Quite a few, actually, yeah. Um, and I think it's an improvement over the previous diesel they had. It still has a little bit of lag. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, as soon as you get going, it takes the turbo kind of... I'm not sure exactly what it is. It may be the throttle mapping. I think the it's the size to spool up. Is that, it's all, uh, you know. Yeah, so it's not... You know, it's not my favorite diesel in this class. We're going to talk more about diesels in right. a second. Um, so if you, if I would recommend the diesel in general in a half ton truck if you drive a lot of miles. Yes. And if you're driving highway miles, this is where the diesel shines. If you're in the city, yeah, mm. the diesel is not so great. Right. Um, because, you know, it's a little bit louder. It's, you know, um, anyway, but on the highway, it shines. And if you're towing, you know, under its, its maximum, which what is around uh, 12, it's still 11? It's still pretty good. It's like 11. 11. Or 10. 10 it's, it's, it's just above 10. Now, I recall that we've towed in the past with the older ones, like around 5,000 pounds, and it was really good. It, yeah. did, it did a great job. But once you start straining it and everything else, you lose a lot of that efficiency. But here's the good news. With these small displacement diesels, the range is impressive. If you're driving cross country, a diesel like this could make a lot of sense. Yeah, in fact, uh, like our friends like Wayne Gerdes from Clean MPG, yeah. uh, I think sometimes you can even get a thousand miles of range if you drive it gen gingerly. Oh, well, Wayne is ridiculous. He's an awesome guy, but he, he, he does, you know, all the you know, <laughs> feathers that drives 35 and a, you know, 65. The thing is, is that um, there is one more thing. A really good friend of mine, bought the first generation outdoorsman, um, so four wheel drive and everything else, and he has that, and he had to go and do the recall, which actually took uh, some power out of the uh, uh, engine, which was a shame, but in over 120,000 miles, he hasn't had a single problem with that other than that recall. He's, and he drives it really, really viciously. So just so you know, I mean, I know some people have said that they're not that reliable, but I've heard some pretty good stories too. So I think it, you know, it's a give and take on that. Yeah. So before we move on to the that next manufacturer, we have to talk about the final engine. <laughs> and this is a beast. Uh, I have it on the screen now. It's just about to get to dealers. It's yeah. not at dealers yet. Yeah, by the time you guys see this recording or hear this recording, uh, it's probably just a week or two away from hitting the dealerships. And that is the Ram TRX with the big, beefy, awesome Hellcat V8. Yeah, and this is a 6.2 supercharged, 702 horsepower, 650 pound-feet of torque. And this is a true off-road truck. It's aimed directly at the Ford Raptor. Yeah. I mean, as far as the specs are concerned, it's a wide body kit. It's got special suspension. It's got all the little technical details. And it's also very expensive. Extraordinary. Very expensive. powerful. But it's now over 700 horsepower. This is what we're starting to call the super truck. It right? is the fastest truck I've ever driven from the factory. Yeah, and we've had many videos with it. We actually put it on a drag race. We took uh, it out front. A couple drag races. We, yes, we towed with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's not a towing machine. It, so it, not really, no. And, and then we'll explain why. So why can't it? I mean, it, it's payload and it's towing. They're not that impressive. Right. So max towing is about 8,100 pounds. Payload can be you know, between 1,300 pounds and about 960 pounds. So, and the reason for that is 
uh, the special suspension, primary, primary reason, because mm -hmm. the springs are a little bit softer. They're matched to these active, amazing shocks from Bill Stein. Right. Right. And because the springs are a little bit softer, it's meant to, you know, soak up the big bumps and even the jumps that the truck can do. Right. Uh, because of that, uh, it's not really meant to support a lot of weight. That is correct. In fact, you have the, the very same problem or issue or whatever you want to call it with the Ford Raptor. And once again, that's, and most off-road uh, packages will actually take away from payload and towing. Yeah, and that's true across the board. You're, you're absolutely right. And then finally, um, well, fuel efficiency is <laughs> uh, it's another story. Uh, we, we won't mention it. I was getting between, I think, 9.5 and, and 11. I think, I think you actually lose MPG as it sits there without the engine on. It, it just <laughs> it swills gas. But what you're getting is sort of the Lamborghini of trucks, right? You're getting something that is so grossly overpowered and overcapable that you know, only a few people are going to be able to afford to buy this thing. It's way expensive. I think they start at 79? Actually, no. So 71, 790, 71. 71, or 72 if you're round. Right. Uh, but it's going to be hard to find one of those trucks, right? Yeah. A lot of them will have options. Um, uh, a lot of them will be around the higher 70s, like you said, about mm -hmm. 79, 80. Uh, the truck we tested was from Ram at about 91,000. Yeah. You could also push it to 100 grand. So before we move on, we have to say, we have to, you and I, uh, what's our favorite Ram truck engine for the half tons? Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Uh, I'll go first. The, 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 five, the regular 5.7, I mean, as much as I love the TRX, it doesn't make any sense, you know, for day-to-day -day driving for a regular Joe. So I, I like, I actually really do like the Pentastar. I, I, I've been very fond of that engine for years and years, but that 5.7 liter Hemi sounds good, it works well. They've been relatively reliable. The eight-speed hookup with it works pretty damn good. So altogether, if I were to get like a Ram Rebel with that 5.7, without the e-torque, I'd be absolutely thrilled. I have to agree with you. I, I mean, as much as I love driving the TRX, it's effortless in every way, right? It's comfortable, it's powerful, yeah, it's very it comfortable sounds truck. great. I, I, I personally, I don't think I'll ever convince my wife to buy an eighty or ninety thousand dollars truck. <laughs> convince your wife? Well, it, you'll probably have to end up sleeping in my basement once you get the or truck. Or sleeping in the TRX. In the TRX, right? Forever. So because of that five seven Hemi, and I think without the e torque, even though the e torque system is now very affordable, I think I would just skip it. I just and, don't. And, I don't really see it as that much of a benefit. And because you can put Mopar parts on that, you know, right. make it loud, make it cool. Uh, I think 5.7 is where it's at. Absolutely. So let's move on to GM, right? And we're going to show you the Silverado 1500, but mm -hmm. this applies to this GMC as well. Yeah, the Sierra. Yeah, the Sierra, G, uh, GMC Sierra 1500 as well. Uh, lots of engines to talk about. This is five also. Mm -hmm. Five different powertrains, and they're very different. And five engines, but also they have a lot of transmission options. This is where things get complicated. And guys, we've done several videos on this where we focus on each manufacturer. So if you go to TFL Now channel mm -hmm. on YouTube or even TFL Truck channel on YouTube, you will see you and I have dug into the Ford. We've dug into the Chevy engines. We talked about Ram choices, very, very detailed. We just kind of overview. This is an overview. Yeah, this is sort of a way to generalize it and just taking everything and putting it together and trying to do it in less than an hour. Yes. So now let's start with the Silverado. It has a base engine as a 4.3 liter Ecotuck 3. They, they call it V6. It's a gas engine that's been around for quite some time. Right. They haven't changed it much uh, in the last several years. I want to say like four or five years. And the 4.3 actually dates back decades. Oh, yeah. I mean, in terms in of different, display, in, in different, different configurations. configurations, right. Yeah. I mean, there was even the Chevy S10 had a 4.3 liter version yeah. of it and everything else. So the thing is, is that this is a different engine from that. But I mean, the displacement's the same. And it is their base engine. It's their entry level engine with an entry level transmission. Yes, it's a six speed automatic. The, no, none of these offer a manual anymore. None of them. Which is a shame. But, but the six-speed automatic, this is kind of a fleet truck, once again. It doesn't tow very much. It's kind of like the Ram V6, the base gas V6 engine. It's not rated to tow very heavy, but you can get it as a two-door mm -hmm. basic truck, WT, they call it work truck, with a longer eight-foot bed. And you can just use it as a fleet truck, as a runabout, as your work vehicle. It starts at about 30195 They also have discounts, like you said. Right. Uh, many, many different discounts. But this is one of the more affordable options so far on the list. 
I know the Ram Classic is another affordable option. It is indeed. Uh, you can get. Um, and once again, if you don't tow a lot, if you, you know, want to use it around town as a very simple truck, I think that's probably for you. But uh, there are four other engine options on top of it. Right, and the next one is really impressive only because it's so unique. And yeah. And that's because it's a turbocharged four-cylinder engine. And so far, General Motors is the only truck company in the United States offering a half-ton truck that has a four-cylinder turbo as an option. Yeah, this is a 2.7, like you said, uh, 310 horsepower and about 347 pound-feet of torque, about 350. Right, which is really impressive. But you know what's cool? Andre got a chance to go behind the scenes with this engine at the GM Proving Grounds. Tell him a little bit about that. Yeah, I was actually fortunate enough to be at the, uh, the actual introduction of this engine. They invited uh, several journalists, and I was one of them, to the Proving Grounds in Michigan. And they gave us several Silverado trucks that were parked in the parking lot. Right. And they said, we have something new, but drive these around a little bit for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to tell you what's new. Just, just go feel them yeah, out. Yeah, they didn't let you lift the hood or anything. No, just, no yeah. opening the hood, no looking under the truck. They right. said, just get in it, drive it a few minutes, and tell us what you think. I got in it. It was pretty quiet. The engine you know, started up. Mm -hmm. uh, it was relatively quiet. I accelerated, and I almost felt this turbocharged feeling, you know, mm -hmm. like not too much wine, there's not too much noise from the turbo. Um, and I was like, at that time, you know, the two liter turbo was in every crossover that they built, right? right. Equinox and et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, did they just put a two liter in there? And I, I, I got out of the truck and I talked to one of the engineers. I was like, it's, it feels like it's a turbocharged engine. I know it's not a diesel and it may be a two liter. They're like, Wow, they're like, no, it's not, but it's a 2.7. So it's a large displacement four cylinder, right? It's right. on the upper end of the displacements. Yeah. But it's very high tech, dude. It can run on two cylinders. It, can, it has variable valve timing. It's got this really fancy turbocharger that tries to eliminate lag. It almost feels like a diesel. It does, but it doesn't fall off a cliff like a diesel. No. So when you're accelerating off the line, I'd driven this thing up and down the Ike Gauntlet a few times without a trailer, and, and then I towed lightly with it. Uh, I, think, I think it was like 4,000 or 5,000 pounds. Really good engine, surprisingly good. The thing about it that I really liked is that, once again, unlike a diesel where once you get up to about uh, 3,500, 4,000 RPM, uh, the power kind of fades out and everything else, and you're no longer really you know moving it. Down the highway, this thing will just keep on going. It's like a freight train. But it does have limited capacity. Yeah, the towing is limited. They actually, for 2021, just raised the towing just a smidge. Oh, yeah? So they, they uh, retested, re recertified this truck. Actually, it's pretty affordable. Um, in the work truck configuration, it's available as well, mm -hmm. 2.7. It's only $155 extra over the other V6. I would definitely, so, definitely get this So you gotta, you got to just decide, um, like, do you want the kind of the older design V6 with a six speed or this engine with an eight speed. Right, but this uh, one tows a little bit more, a lot more actually than the V6. Now it tows a little bit more, yeah. yeah. It's, it's almost 9,000 pounds or just over that. So, so if you want a little bit more capability, maybe a little bit more efficiency, just this, just a little bit more, this could be an engine. But eight speed has recently had a few marks, kind of reliability marks against yeah. it. Yeah. Um, our producer and editor, um, Alex. Who, who's the motorcycle guy. Yeah, he runs the TFL bike channel with Case and, and Paul. Uh, he purchased a new 8-speed powered uh, V8 Silverado, and he had very, a lot of issues with the transmission. It wasn't shifting smoothly. Yeah, the transmission had some real issues. So, uh, based on that, we also heard some reports from other viewers with the same issue. So right now, I'm a little cautious about the 8-speed, but we heard very few things that are bad with a 6 or the 10-speed. Right, and we're going to get to the 10-speed in just a sec with yeah. the next engine option, which is currently living inside of our long-term Chevy Silverado Trail Boss. Yes. That's 5.3-liter V8. 5.3-liter V8, absolutely, and we, we have it with a 10-speed. Mm -hmm. uh, we, want, we purchased that truck about a year ago because specifically for this reason. We wanted to buy the most common engine that they built, which is the 5.3, and then we wanted the new transmission. Um, and it, it's, it's been bulletproof. Absolutely has. Now, at the time, I was yelling at Roman. I was so mad at him when he told me that we're getting this, but we're not getting the 6.2. And it's like, dude, the 6.2 is so much more powerful. 
It is a better towing engine. It is sounds amazing. We all love it at TFL. It's one of our favorite engines, like our top five gas engines. Really, really good flexible engine, but there are problems with it. Regardless of those problems, I was just like, dude, why did you do this? And he said, look, most people who are out there in terms of volume will be buying the 5.3. And I want to see how it performs, not just off road with the trail boss, but how it tows and how it hauls. And you know what? I have been thoroughly surprised. The combination of that 5.3 with the 10 speed automatic transmission has been solid as hell. It's one of the best towing trucks in its class. I'm going to say that right here. Considering everything that we've towed with it, mm -hmm. it's done fantastic. Yeah, and the trail bus is rated at about 9,500 pounds max tow. Right. And we pushed it to the limit. Oh, hell yeah, we have. And it always just comes back and asks for more. Basically. It absolutely just shrugs it off. Yeah. Uh, the 5.3 is interesting in the Silverado because it's available with three transmissions. Yeah. So you really have to watch very carefully. If you're at the dealership, make sure you understand this, right? Yes. Because it's, it, it can be configured with a six speed in the lower trims. 8 speed in some of the mid trims and 10 speeds. <laughs> so I would recommend going with a 10. It's more expensive, but I think it offers you better performance and better efficiency, acceleration, efficiency, and kind of everything across the board. It is more expensive because it's available in the upper trim levels, like starting with the LT, RST, um, I'm sorry, LT, LTZ, and High Country. So um, including the trail bosses. Right. Now, there is a little caveat in terms of how great the trail boss is and, and a lot of the other uh, General Motors trucks. It's, it's a sticking point if you're serious about off-roading. If you're not, it's no big deal. But if you're serious about off-roading, they do not offer in these trucks a uh, electronic locking rear diff. What they have is the G80 rear end, which is a mechanically locking rear diff. It doesn't automatic, have, it's, yeah. it's automatic and it, it's mechanical. And yeah. so they're in our experience, you get a lot of wheel spin before it actually kicks in and actually pushes you forward. And we've done it with dozens and dozens of trucks. So we have a lot of experience with it on, in snow, on the road, everything else. It's just fine. But off-road, if you're really serious about going off-road, you may want to keep that in mind. Yeah, totally. And um, so let's move on. To, and then we, will have, we have to pick our favorite, right? Oh, amongst those? Yeah. Yeah. So the next one is 6.2 V8. Uh, there, for me, it's a bit, bit of love and hate, right? It's really powerful, awesome engine. Mm -hmm. 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque. Beefy. Uh, it's not available in the work truck. So if you want this engine, you have to step up to a, at least, uh, well, um, in the Silverado, uh, let's see, so uh, it's the, available in the LT Trail LT, Boss. LT, yeah. Um, and also Custom Trail Boss, which is kind of a more affordable option to get it. Also the High Country. So... Uh, several of these, and you usually have to buy four-wheel drive as well. Right. So you have to, and also the ten-speed, I think, right? Yeah, the ten-speed is only made it right. to the six-point-two. So it's an awesome engine. But so the, the flip side of that is it doesn't say it requires it, but highly recommends premium fuel. Uh, the owner's manual that I've read and checked several times said uh, premium fuel is recommended, ninety-one and ninety-three octane. Right. But you can run slightly less octane, but if you hear a knock or something else happens, you have to immediately go back to premium. That's a real shame, yeah. And we're talking about more common trucks. We're not talking about, you know, you know very expensive vehicles yeah. here. So that kind of t makes me take a step back and I'm like, really, do I want, do you, would I really choose this engine? What do, you, what do you think about the 6.2? The 6.2 is, once again, we, we, we've driven with it. It's, it's a fast engine. It's a powerful engine. It sounds good. It does a lot of things quite well. But unfortunately, he's absolutely right about the knocking. We've, we, I've encountered it. The whole thing about that powertrain is that if you can afford that type of truck where you're going all the way up to the higher level and you want that better power, you're going to pay for it at the pump at least. And that's, you know, right now gas is really cheap. But in the future, it won't be. So... You have to take that into account. With that being said, in terms of the power gains that you're getting, um, if you're it's really huge. in, yeah, which yeah. is huge. Um, I mean, what, it's, what is it, 400 and, 410 horsepower? 420. And dude, 420 and, horsepower. And you and I drag raced them. Yeah. The 5.3 versus 6.2. Uh -huh. And it's like several truck lengths. Oh, man. I that mean, thing... the 6.2 is so powerful. What was the torque on the 6.2? 460? 460. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're talking about, you know, serious competitor for all of the high-powered engines that we're talking about today. The thing is, is that at the end of the day, 
I just think that's a lot, because you have to spend a lot of extra money in order to get one, and then you're paying more on the gas. So if you really don't need it, maybe you should think about the 5.3, but we'll talk about that in a minute because we have one more engine to go. Yeah, it's a three liter straight six diesel. It's the Duramax engine. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna say it right now, it's my favorite diesel in the half ton segment. Absolutely, there, there's, there's no doubt, Andre and I are 100% on the same page on this. We have had wonderful experiences with this engine. General Motors, this is a very different engine than the other two that it, it competes against. Both the Ford and the one that's used by FCA are V6s. This is a straight six, really good for torque. It is super smooth. It was specifically dedicated as a powertrain to be used in their half-ton vehicles. And now they're using the same powertrain in the Suburban as an option, the Tahoe, the Yukon, and also the Escalade, right? It's gonna be available in the Escalade. Yeah, totally, dude. And actually, we uh, tomorrow, or this weekend, d December 12th, mm -hmm. um, I don't know when you're listening to this, uh, we actually have a Tahoe diesel um, video coming out when we towed with it and we actually did the MPG testing on it. It's very impressive. Uh, so two stories about Please, this engine. Please, go for it. Just, just really briefly. I remember being at Mr. Truck's uh, proving grounds <laughs> here in Colorado, <laughs> right. uh, his, his uh, property, and I left the three liter straight six diesel Silverado running. Mm -hmm. You know, we were hooking up the trailer, I left the engine running, right, it was idling. I, I jumped out, uh, I, you know, him and I were moving something on the trailer. Mm -hmm. I came up to the truck and I thought it was off because it was so quiet. Mm. And I tried to start it again, but it was running. <laughs> so this is how smooth and quiet this engine is. Yeah. Um, power delivery, very linear, it accelerates well, has great fuel efficiency. We've really good, some many, of the best in things. class. Yeah, it, real world. This mm -hmm. is what EPA says, this engine delivers. You know, 32 MPG sometimes, maybe even 30 for a four wheel drive truck. Really great. That white one we had, I took home for one day. It, oh, Andre only let me have it for one day because he was like, mine! And he, he was looking at the door handle and everything else. And I live, the round trip for me to get Denver to Boulder, we're in Boulder, I live in Denver, uh, is around 90 miles the way I go. And so I went there, drove around a lot, tried to impress my wife with it, didn't work. Um, but the point is, is that I drove it a lot and both combined city highway with a four-wheel drive truck, fully loaded too, I believe that thing was pretty much loaded. Mm -hmm. I was getting about 26 miles per gallon. This is a full-size pickup truck, dude. This is a truck that, how much can it tow? That, well, in that configuration, well, that one was like uh, 10,000? Now, now they boosted it up. It's near 10 now. It's it near 10, okay. It was a bit lower, but now they pushed it up. I mean, for a truck that can do that and getting combined 26 with my heavy right foot, that was really impressive. And it's a super smooth truck. It is by far my favorite diesel in the class. And now they made it a little cheaper too. Yeah. So they used to be the same. 6.2 and the 3 liter diesel were the same price. Uh -huh. Now they lowered it by about 400, uh, 500 bucks. Which is significant, I'd so, say. So yeah, so uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Sc scratch that. 1,500 bucks. 1,500 bucks. They knocked off the price. All right. So, so they're making it more attractive in every way possible. So now we have to decide, dude, we have five power plants. The base V6, the four banger, two V8s, and the diesel. Quick what, question before yeah. you continue. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, oh, from the V6, the base model V6, how much more is it to get first the 5.3, then the 6.2, and also the diesel? What's, what's the, the price differences there, roughly? <laughs> it's very complex, dude. Yeah, with, you, with, with, I mean, you know just why? to generalize. Yeah, do you know why? Because the like I was saying, uh, and you, if you see me scrolling, if you're watching this on YouTube, on TFL Talk channel, um, not every engine is available in every trim. Right. So when you step up to a different trim, you gain So you money. might not get it in the LT, but you, you have to go up to the yeah. high, whatever, so, yeah. So it's, it's a similar price step as with the Ram we discussed, you uh -huh. know, about 2,000 bucks for a V8, right. or maybe another, you know, 2,000 bucks for the big V8 and the diesel. Uh, it's just very impossible to say. Okay, so the bottom line is for a couple grand more getting the diesel over the base V6, that makes sense. But simply getting that 2.7 liter four cylinder engine over the base V6 makes a ton of sense. And it's not that expensive. And I'm, I'm definitely hovering around that territory. So I kind of have a double choice. Uh, but you go first. Yeah, I'm torn um, right now. If I was buy buying like a GMC Yukon, something premium, mm -hmm. or a GMC Sierra 84, something uh, I love the 84. Truck, I think I would go with a 6.2. Mm -hmm. Because I'm in that premium territory, I really love that brand. 
right? If I'm with the Chevrolet, I would go, I'm torn between the three liter diesel and the 5.3 with a 10 speed, like in the Turbos. Right. And I don't, I, I'm sorry to say, but the diesel, I, it's not, I don't drive a lot of highway miles anymore, mm. personally. So I would go with a 5.3 10 speed. I'm really close with the 5.3. I really do like that 2.7, I really do, but I just don't really see me using that. Honestly, uh, recently, uh, you know, I drive back and forth to California a lot. It's a thousand mile trip, roughly 1,100 miles. Um, and it's really nice to do it in a vehicle that actually has really good range. And the idea of only stopping once to fuel up, going back and forth each way, that's very attractive to me. And the fact that I don't tow that much, and the fact that I really do like having great range, great mileage, and a truck that is fairly clean, that diesel is very compelling. But at the end of the day, it's the 5.3 for sure. Okay. Five three with the ten speed. I cannot get it with the eight speed after what happened to Alex, who nearly set his on fire uh -huh. because he was so upset with it. But the ten speed, the combination we have in that trail bus is brilliant. I agree, and I didn't expect that initially. Me neither. A lot of people said those engines are too small. Oh, the people were yelling powerful. at us left and right. They overheat all that. None of that is true. For and us. we really pushed it hard. We yeah. took it off road several times. We beat it up with trailers. We overloaded it. We've done um, a lot of camping with it too. That. That truck has been absolutely a star. So very good truck with the 5.3 and the 10 speed. And still offers you at least 10,000 pounds of towing. Yeah. Maybe a little bit less or more depending on your config. So hopefully that helps you because there's a lot of choice here. There is a ton of choice, but we're going to step up to something that even provides more choice. And that's <laughs> Ford. <laughs> okay. So 2021 F-150 is redesigned. Yeah. Right? It's just, I was looking online. I saw one of our local dealers has one. <laughs> All of them have ordered dozens of them, but none of them are showing up yet. Yeah. But one of our dealers has one. That, so, that, so they're arriving. They are arriving. Now, to be fair, obviously, with COVID and everything else, making a brand new truck, it's a very difficult proposition. They had to do a lot of juggling in order just to get these out as soon as they could. Trust me, they're working hard. They want to sell them. But unfortunately, because of that, everything has been strained. And, well, it's taken a long time to get these to dealerships. Yeah, totally. They offer six power plants. <laughs> six, right? Six? Uh, yes. But the good, the good news is that one transmission. Yes. So the six speed that they offered in 2020 and before is gone. Now yeah. they removed the six speed. So now they're basically doubling, the, tripling down on the 10 speed automatic, mm -hmm. which... Um, for the most part has proven pretty well i've never actually had a problem with it i know there's a couple of issues that people talk about on forums every combination of every power plant ever had issues is right? going to have some sort so, of issue so right in general i mean they built hundreds of thousands of these well every not to year. mention the fact that on top of that if you look at other for basically every ford truck that exists has an option for 10-speed automatic transmission. Even the Ranger and the Bronco, they're going to have a 10-speed. Expedition. The Expedition, the, Super the Navigator. Duty has a version of it. Too. Right, right. Um, Super Duty, heavy duty trucks obviously have beefier transmissions. Of course. Uh, much larger. But anyway, yes, this transmission may have issues. There's some forums talk about issues, uh, but now 10-speed across the board, so we don't have a choice if you're looking at the Ford. Uh, the base engine is a 3.3 liter gas V6, so it's a very basic engine. It kind of matches up against the 3.6 liter Ram, right? Mm -hmm. The V6 and there. sort of kind of against the 4.3 liter Chevy. Yeah, so it's kind of in that space because it's affordable, right? right? Uh, the base uh, truck, and I'm talking about XL F150 two door regular cab long bed, is around 29 to 30 grand. So this is a very affordable engine. Yeah, it's price. the value leader. Yeah, and. You know what's funny? Mm -hmm. I was actually uh, looking at the ordering guides for the F-150. For that price, it's like you're getting like vinyl seats, vinyl floor. I mean, almost no options. I mean, you still have kind of the, the new 8-inch display right. in, the, in the truck, but very basic features. I think no, even, no cruise control if you're, if you're at the bottom, bottom, bottom model. So instead so of airbags, they actually have somebody you know behind the uh, thing with a hand pump that'll pump up. Well, the I don't know if it's that far. But, no, no, but, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the point is, is that this is the stripped truck, and not everybody does that. Not everybody offers an absolute base truck. And the good news is, for fleets, this is an ideal vehicle. Yes, if if you're a fleet manager buying uh, lots of trucks, 
and you want certain things, you can definitely choose that. Absolutely. Uh, so, so that's fairly affordable to start, right? It kind of matches up against uh, some of the other big three. Yeah, but it's uh, not the most powerful power plant out there. No. So next, uh, next up, we have to uh, in the in the price step. Uh, is the 2.7 liter V6 EcoBoost. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic. I love this engine. Yes, it's a small displacement V6, twin turbocharged. Um, I've driven dozens of these, including when I go to five-star tuning, the guys out, out east in South mm. Carolina, they tune these engines to insane levels. They are bananas. Those guys are awesome. <laughs> they, they don't never stop. No, they'll uh, never, they, they, they're, so, they're, they're hunting for power. Yeah, so this engine already comes with 325 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque from the factory. It's $1,200. Absolutely worth every single penny because you're getting so much more capability and it's a fairly efficient engine. Yeah, and, and gets really good efficiency too. Yeah, yeah. E EPA-wise, uh, I truthfully, I never was able to get like some of the higher EPA numbers in this engine mm -hmm. because you're always in it. Right, <laughs> you're right. always accelerating, it's fun. It's a hot engine. It's a, it's a lightweight engine and the truck is pretty fun. It tows not too much. Yeah. I mean, the, the maximum rating is depending on the rear differential ratio that, the, that you're and buying. And the configuration of the truck. Yeah, it's probably up to about 9,000 pounds. But still, I mean, that's okay for most people. Right, if you're only towing, let's say, like 5,000 on a regular basis, this engine is absolutely perfect for you. It is really responsive. In, in my estimation, in traffic, this is the best engine you can get other than perhaps the super high-end ones, which are a lot more expensive. Next up is a five liter Coyote. The five liter is still here. Yes. Um, a lot of people said, you know, they might discontinue it. it we might thought go so too. Away. Yeah. I was thinking maybe it's so. Yeah. But for 2021, and they haven't talked about the future yet, for 2021 model year, this engine is still here. It's been updated with a, a multi displacement system, which means it can shut off four of its cylinders mm -hmm. under light for, load. for better MPG. So this is kind of the first uh, application of that for mm -hmm. the Coyote. Because Ram has been doing it in the 5.7, Chevy's, Chevy's been done doing it, it forever. in the past, in the, for forever. Now Ford is doing it, and they gained one MPG. Uh, so that's that's a decent improvement. It, it is, especially over the long run. And the thing about the Coyote is that this is a powertrain we all love. It sounds amazing. It's really good for pooling. It is a, a very flexible engine. A lot of you guys out there are very much against turbocharging. Which I can understand. Uh, Ford has put a lot of money behind their turbocharged engines, but for those of you who are just not 100% on board with turbocharging, this is your choice. And it is a really good choice. Not only that, but it's actually a very similar engine that they use in the Ford Mustang. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 400 horsepower now. So they mm -hmm. bumped the power just a little bit. Now it's around 400 and 410 pound-feet of torque. It's a very stout engine, and the 10-speed uses uh, that power quite well. It does. It's matched to a 10-speed. It's 2,000 bucks when you consider the base V6. Right, so 2,000 over the V6, another really good expenditure for those of you who want some real power. Uh, so, and they can tow around, um, what was, a 9,000, I think is its comfort zone. Yeah, and it can be rated higher, a little just bit above higher. 10,000. Once again, it depends on whether or not you, you know, four-wheel drive, all the configurations that you can get, it does matter in terms of overall performance. Yeah, once again, we're not going deep. No. Here is mostly an overview, uh, but this engine is great for pulling. It's actually as efficient under load as some of the uh, EcoBoost engines that Ford offers. Right. So, you know, when Ford says EcoBoost is really, really efficient, they mean if you're not using it hard. <laughs> if you're pushing that V6 turbo, uh, it's really thirsty as well. But they are crazy powerful, and we'll get to that in just one moment. One final thing about the uh, yes. Coyote, Andre, is that it is not available, it used to be available in other vehicles, but they've sort of pared it down. Whether or not Ford is going to get rid of this engine down the line is debatable. It's unusual that it's still here because they've been moving towards EcoBoost. So I would say that if you guys are really into the idea of getting a Ford V8, you might want to hurry up because it may disappear. I mean, we could be wrong. Ford has not said anything about its future or, at all. Or, so V8 engines and pickup trucks go together like peanut butter. Yeah, they do. But, so there may be another V8 that they're hiding that they're not telling us about. Yeah, but we've heard some rumors. I don't know. A lot of people are saying 7.3, Godzilla! Yeah, that's a very else. heavy engine. <laughs> 
I, it, anyway. it could happen. It could happen. It would be a real. It would be interesting to see how it works. But the bottom line is, we, we can only assume so much. But what we do know for a fact is, Ford is putting a lot of time and energy and money behind their EcoBoost engines. So talk about EcoBoost. Talking about EcoBoost, mm -hmm. next engine in line for the price is a 3.5. So the bigger EcoBoost V6, which is their workhorse, uh, and it's been around. Initial generation of this engine came out 10 years ago. Uh, yeah. It seems like time is flying by. <laughs> But anyway, it's been a long time since this engine was actually first introduced in a previous generation. Uh, 2600 bucks for this from the base base engine up to this engine. So these price increments are pretty small, right? Yeah, I'd say fairly reasonable. So for 1200 bucks, you get the small EcoBoost. Uh, then for another 700 bucks, you get a V8. Then another 600 bucks, you get the bigger V6. So these are not very big increments in price. Right. Uh, but if you want maximum towing, this is the choice. This is the engine. It is and a beast. They boosted the power and torque on this one. Again? <laughs> 400 horsepower now. Oh, yeah. 500 pound-feet of torque. 500. Damn. This engine basically, it's more than 6'2". Yeah. Uh, as far as torque is concerned. Yeah, it outperforms so, any V8, I think, other than the well, massive TRX V8. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's basically. crazy numbers. So crazy numbers. Uh, and we have the proof, by the way, behind that with the older EcoBoosts because they absolutely ate up the I gauntlet. They were some of the fastest powertrains we had. They had very little strain pulling trailers. They were really impressive. Uh, so at least two engines left, right? <laughs> That's right. Because there is another 3.5 that not a lot of people talk about, but it is one that you can get, well, that you do get with the Ford Raptor and I believe the F-150 Limited but this is a 2020 models, right? Right. They're we don't about... know for sure whether or not this is going to be continued in the next batch. Right. So the high output, the HO uh, EcoBoost, uh, they're kind of discontinuing it because they're stopping production of the current Raptor right? Right. and the current F-150 Limited, which had this engine at 450 horsepower. It's been the most powerful engine in the half ton segment. That is correct. So we don't know what's happening in the next Raptor yet, right? Ford hasn't said. Wait, but we should find out pretty soon because uh, you know, numbers are going to be coming out eventually. But the point here is that for the 2020 model, you can still get this powertrain. Yeah, and, and it is the most lots, probably. Right. Yeah. And uh, it is the most powerful uh, uh, 3.5 liter V6 that you can get. But there is another engine that Ford is producing. Yes. Now, if you want really premium technology, uh, and it costs money, oh yeah, um, they have the new hybrid. It's a full hybrid in the sense that you'll actually move your vehicle certain distance. It's not under it electric not, power. The, the, under electric power only. Um, it's not gonna. It's not a plug-in hybrid. It's a. It's, it has a small battery, 1.5 kilowatt hour battery, but crazy power output. And you drag raced recently against the Raptor. Yes, which you can see uh, on TFL truck. It was a great drag race. That thing is remarkably fast. This engine, compared to the base V6 uh, 33, costs 4,500 bucks. So right. this is now a significant step. But you're getting, listen to this. So in the four-wheel drive model, you're getting 24 MPG combined because you're also able to get 24 MPG in the city. Right. Um, Two-wheel drive version has just been rated this morning. Um, it's rated at 25 MPG in the city and 25 combined. So this is, according to the EPA, now we haven't verified all these numbers yet. No, nope, we haven't. But 25 is the highest full-size economy you can currently get. Out of a gas engine. Yes. Um, it is expensive though. Yeah. 430 horsepower, which is a lot of power, 570 pound-feet of torque. This is more than some heavy duty diesels from like 10 years ago right? Uh, or five years ago. Now there are a couple things. Uh, first of all, they are using the 3.5 EcoBoost, but it's, it's been modified. So it can work in two different ways. It, it, it can give you, you know, performance obviously, but it can also work kind of like a generator. And that's the other thing about this truck. This truck has a couple party tricks. And Andre is in love with it. He's having a hard time right now deciding whether or not he should try to find a way to buy one. And yes. I know it because uh, I, I can see his stress little temple starts uh, flexing when he <laughs> looks at one. Yes. So here's the thing about this truck. Um, you can get well over 700 miles range, which is incredible for a gas truck. You can bring it to a work site or a campsite and run a lot of power out of it for over 30 hours if you have a full tank. And that's on maximum draw. So. Andre, what is it about this thing that makes it into an amazing generator? Well, it's using this battery as a buffer, right? right. So you have 1.5 kilowatt hours of capacity, kind of like 
think about like how water flows, right? You have a little like buffer pool and mm -hmm. then it's when you're using power, you're drawing a lot of energy. And we have a video where David, our friend David actually welded based on this, you know, output from the We from charged this electric cars using We charged this electric thing. cars, we powered two RVs, two RV trailers. Yeah, big ones too. Um, and the, and then the engine kicks on when it senses that the energy from the battery from this and it and it and it recharges it back up exactly. as you're sitting there. And it does it automatically. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. You just yeah. have to push start button. Yeah. It will be either idling and usually for, with our experience it's only at about 1000 RPM. Yeah. So if you think it's going to be like revving at 4 grand or 5 grand sitting there, no. It just kind of mildly idles and charges the battery and actually gets the power out. So it's really kind of cool. And it's somewhat seamless. The, if you look at the back of the vehicle, you're going to see a whole bunch of outlets. Um, you can power a lot of stuff. Basically, you can run an entire work site off of this damn thing. It's a really impressive setup. Yeah, and we'll continue playing with this, hopefully. Oh, yeah. uh, so, um, so this engine is expensive. Like I said, it's available throughout the range. There's a final choice. They have a 3-liter V6 diesel. They call it the Power Stroke. It's... It continues unchanged, mostly, from right. the previous generation truck, from the 2020 and before. Um, it's the most expensive option they have. It's about five grand. Which doesn't make a lot of sense to no, me, but keep no. going, and, yeah. And it's not, so the power of it is le a little bit less than in the others, mm -hmm. from GM and Ram, right? Right. as far as torque and power. Um, and then it tows okay, so why would you get this engine? I think, once again, if you're looking for highway miles, you're driving like 40, 50,000 miles a year. If you want something that gets great highway efficiency, maybe this is a choice for you. But why would you get this over the hybrid, which it's becoming is a harder less choice, expensive, right? right? So, so now we have to decide out of all this Ford choice for engines for F-150, which one is our favorite? I love the 2.7. That 2.7 is, is, I mean, I, the, the new hybrid has blown me away. But in terms of what the type of driving I do, the type of daily thing, that 2.7 liter engine is everything I need. It is so spunky off the line. It tows great for, for you know, 5,000 pounds, 6,000 pounds, no problem. And it just financially makes a lot of sense. Yeah, for me, uh, actually, I'm torn between the Coyote and a hybrid. Oh, come on, hybrid, you know it. <laughs> you, you, you were lusting after that thing, and, and you, he was looking mopey in the office when he had to walk away from that truck. Yeah. Yeah, he so, loves it. Come on. I love the idea of it because um, it's, so first of all, it's efficient, right? Mm -hmm. it, I, it can provide power. I love the V8 sound. I'm kind of torn, but I think I would choose the hybrid. Uh, we don't know anything about it as far as reliability, durability, et cetera, et cetera. Makes a lot of funny noises, I could say. <laughs> it, it, it does. It makes a ton of noises. But, you know, there's a lot. Of, the technology is just mind-boggling that goes behind this engine. So I would go hybrid for this new generation of fun. I knew it. Now, one final thing I want to ask you about Ford um, with the diesel. We've towed with it before. What, what did we tow with? It was like 7,000 pounds we towed? Yeah, and we did the MPG loop. We did I gauntlet runs. It did okay, if I recall. Yeah, for towing, the diesel is really good. Yeah. Yeah. As, so a, as a, any diesel would do. Yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was a decent thing. It's just that, once again, we're just having a hard time getting our heads around the fact that the hybrid is so much more efficient and less expensive. It just makes a lot more sense. So out of all of these, so um, I think, you know, we kind of narrowed in on the Hemi 5.7, mm -hmm. the 5.3 GM engine. Um, you kind of picked the 2.7 EcoBoost mm -hmm. or Tundra and Titan. Do you have a favorite out of those top five? Um, mm. if, if you picked, uh, is that a If I could make my perfect truck um, without being silly, well, you know, like, you know, obviously <laughs> I'd want to put the TRX engine in, in you know. Anything. Anything, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to put one of those like a Toyota Tacoma? Or a Tundra. Or one well, Tacoma. <laughs> I would put it in a small truck. That would be awesome. Now, uh, in all honesty, I, I try to look at the whole picture. Now, bear in mind that not everybody wants to do what I want to do. So, I don't tow a lot. I have a little tent trailer that's like, 1,400 pounds when it's fully loaded. Uh, but I do a lot of hauling, so I like to have some you know, pretty good capacity. And that's the interesting thing, is that some of these trucks with the smaller engines actually haul a little bit more mm -hmm. when you look at the configuration. So when it's all said and done, I'm torn between the 5.3 from Chevrolet and the 2.7 from Ford. Those are fantastic engines, but my favorite engine still is the 5.6 liter V8 from Nissan. I think it's such a flexible, great engine. 
I just wish, I just wish that Nissan would make their trucks a little bit more affordable on the bottom end, actually throughout their entire thing to make them a little bit more competitive. But yeah, I, those three are my choices. And then out of those three, um, I, I mean, I do like the 5.7 as well. Ah, see, you're making me choose. I know, no, it's tough. I, it wasn't fair. I put you on the spot. It's a very tough choice. Uh, but I think you guys are seeing what we're talking about, right? Right. I mean, it depends on your need also, right? If you don't have a lot of towing need, maybe a more basic engine is good for you, right? Right. And, and consider this, that you're going to be saving a lot of dough, not just, you know, buying the vehicle, but also at the pump. If you're getting, you know, the smaller displacement engines in most cases are pretty efficient by comparison to the much larger ones. Based on the real world testing that we've done at TFL Truck, I'm torn between the 5.3 10 speed mm -hmm. and this hybrid, the F-150, the new one, after all the testing we've done. Uh, I don't know enough about the hybrid yet. You know, we haven't lived with it for an extended period of time, but that's where I am. Even, it's hard choice. I, I, I know what you're saying, but yeah. those are my top two. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, as much as the engines all are awesome, and they are, everything we've mentioned today, all of them are pretty solid choices. It's just a question of how you configure the, the vehicle. It really comes down to what you really need to do with the vehicle on a day-to-day -day basis. And for us, we're sort of thinking about that. And I know that Andre in the near future will probably end up buying a hybrid because he loves it so dearly. And I want to live with it. Yeah, maybe. I know. But you, you, and you love the tech and everything yeah, else and the yeah. numbers. And yeah. he loves numbers. He loves yeah. numbers so much. Numbers. Me, I, yeah, that's the thing. You know what? Even though I love the, the 2.7 and uh, the diesel out of the Chevrolet and all that, yeah, I think I want a V8. I still want to hear a V8 groan. Bum, yeah, but it, but and that that's where the five point seven comes in because that is a really good sound. <laughs> ah, I can't make a choice. You know, right. it really depends at the end of the day on what the prices are because I'm cheap. So that, that's the other part. So guys, thank you so much for joining us. We hope this at the very least helps you kind of steer in a particular direction. A lot of you guys really don't need the super powerful engines, and some of you guys might want to look a little bit more beefy than the base engine. Yeah, totally. And of course, go back to tfltruck.com. We also have tflaffroad.com for more off-road worthy stuff and Nathan has several really great stories. Dakar is coming up, right? Dakar is coming up. Yeah. By the time you guys see this recording, it's only going to be uh, about a week or so before Dakar hits. The Dakar Rally is the toughest off-road race ever. And there are a lot of entrants, including, including let me quickly say mm -hmm. this, a classics class vehicles that were built before 2000, going all the way back 30 years and more, they're competing as well in a special class. I highly recommend you go to tflaffroad.com. We have a whole bunch of uh, information out there with every single class that's out there, and you'll be able to find out more information. Thank you guys, as always. See you next time.